about if you read uh, the Sister Vegan Anthology, which, by the way, Vine Sanctuary has on our table uh, when you visit the exhibit area. <laughs> um, um, uh, uh, so we've got this disproportionate whiteness. And the question becomes, then, what do we do about it? Uh, uh, or, or do we need to do anything about it? Maybe to, let's just be clear why we need to do something about it, why this is not cool. Obviously, it leaves us vulnerable uh, to these bad faith charges, uh, uh, to uh, people who uh, will use uh, the disproportionate whiteness of the movement as, as an excuse to not think about the arguments that are being put forward, uh, to not consider the rights of animals, to, to engage in that sloppy thinking where they say, well, you've got these problems, and so your cause is unjust. It leaves us vulnerable. But that's not the only reason why it's problematic. It's, it's problematic for a reason the Republicans just discovered. Think back to the election, and they were just so sure because they had a really solid uh, proportion of the white vote that they were going to win the election. So, you know, just to be really clear, white people are not the majority uh, in the world uh, and, 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 and pretty soon will not be the majority in the United States either. Uh, uh, so, um, uh, you know, if we're interested in uh, actually fundamentally changing uh, the culture, I think that's not going to happen uh, if this tiny little proportion of the world's people are, are just talking to each other about it. Um, uh, uh, next comes the issue of standing. Who gets, who gets to say certain things? Who gets to talk about certain things? Now, you can argue in some sort of abstract world that anybody has the right to say anything that's true. Uh, 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 uh. Kim was talking about that, uh, oh man, the comment about the rodeos. And I remember when I was teaching at an HBCU that's a historically black college, I remember all my students making the same point themselves about vivisection, saying, hey, it was done to us, uh, and this is why. Uh, uh, uh. But you know, like it or not, the way that people construct our uh, our cultures and the historical power relations being what they are. Some people can say things uh, that other people, I mean, they could physically say them, uh, but, um, but if they do, uh, it's going to be heard really differently. Um, furthermore, when we're talking about animal rights, and especially when we're talking about veganism, uh, we're, when we're talking about moral issues, and, and it tends to be the case that members of a group that have historically perpetrated wrongs against another group generally are not seen as the people that the members of that other group are looking to for moral guidance. Um, furthermore, um, uh, when we're talking about things like diet, uh, uh, we listen to people who are more like us. Uh, 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 and so, just in terms of who can say what to whom and actually be heard, our disproportionate whiteness is a problem. But that's not the only reason. It's not just that. There's also this conception within feminism called standpoint. And standpoint, uh, uh, as all of my MCT students used to know, is uh, the, the idea that, well, I'm saying it very simply, but it's actually a deep academic concept that books have been written about. But it boils down to what you can see depends on where you stand. Uh, people who stand in a particular place, and that can be your actual geographic place, it can also be your race, your class, your life history, whether or not you're a survivor of trauma, uh, et cetera. Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> Um, um, uh, uh, determines what you can see. What ideas you will have. What connections you're able to perceive. And so what I'm here to say to you is that if you have a movement that is disproportionately, I don't care what it is, fill in the blank. And it's mostly this, whatever the, the blank is. 
we're talking about whiteness, but it, it, it wouldn't be. You're only, you're not going to be, there won't be the people there who have the standpoints to see certain things. Certain ideas won't actually be had because the people who are standing in the places that allow them to see those connections and have those ideas aren't in the room having the conversation with you. And I know that's really hard for Americans. We really like to think, and, and those of us who are smart, like we really like to think that if I just thought really hard, I could have all of the ideas that are worth having. Um, but it's just not true. Uh, uh, people who have different experiences than you, uh, things are filtering in their head, and they can come up with stuff that you can't come up with. So all of those reasons means we have to fix the problem. Luckily, we can. I used to work at the Center for Anti-Racist Education. My job was helping people, helping organiz uh, organizations. This was back in the 90s when the environmental movement was starting to realize they had a race problem. Um, and various social justice movements were realizing they had race problems. And, 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 and so guess what? The animal live movement is not the first movement to say, uh-oh, we've got a whiteness problem. What are we, what are we gonna do with it? Uh, uh, I don't have the time, since she just waved a, a card at me, uh, to, to say all of the things uh, that we could do or not do. But let me tell you this, the environmental movement, which by the way is still uh, struggling with its own whiteness problem, um, has come up with you know, a few simple things. Um, um, uh, one, recognize uh, that um, I don't know what I, I just have to do recognize. I don't know what I meant by that. Um, oh, right, do recognize that there are people of color in the movement, uh, 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 and they may uh, have things uh, to say that are different, that are being said by other people, and there needs to be avenues uh, for them to be heard. At the same time, you don't want to be tokenizing people. Uh, uh, you mentioned Breeze Harper. Breeze is a vegan advocate. Uh, she, she, she herself will tell you she, 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 she doesn't do animal liberation work, and yet uh, any time uh, people you know, are now trying to bring her in as, just because she's the only name they can think of, even though there are plenty of women of color within the animal lib movement. So, so no tokenizing, uh, recognizing that people have different standpoints, that's very different than turning and saying, uh, what do your people think about this? Um, so do not ask them to speak for their race. Um, I know this sounds really ABC, but, but it can be uh, really useful. Do be aware uh, that people from different groups, uh, uh, be that race, class, ethnicity, the case, uh, religion, etc., may have a particular interests. Uh, and you should know uh, uh, things that are relevant to uh, those interests. For example, if you're talking about dairy, it's useful to know that the majority of people of color are lactose intolerant. Um, and it's, it's, it's interesting and important to understand the concept of dietary racism and the way that the uh, USDA, which promotes dairy consumption for everybody, is disadvantaging uh, black, Latino, and Asian, and Native American kids by putting milk in the school lunches uh, for our, our most uh, disadvantaged learners. Uh, uh, who are disproportionately lactose intolerant. It's good to know that fact. It's not good to assume that that's the only thing about dairy uh, that a person of color is going to care about. Uh, to assume that they won't, in fact, care about the mother cow and the children and the children being taken away. That's uh, 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 saying you don't care. You're only going to care about the material things that are important to your people. Uh, as opposed to uh, that you, like everybody else, think about moral issues and want to be a good person. Uh, uh, you've got feelings like everybody else and your heart may be touched by the cow. Uh, so it's both and, not either or. Um, oh gosh, 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 gosh. Uh, 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 do recognize that there may be institutionalized racism within your organization. Uh, how, what might, what that, might that, that look like? It might look like um, uh, uh, race and class are so closely linked. It may look like uh, having meetings at a time where a person uh, who works for a living and has to deal with childcare uh, can't make. It may be having meetings at a place that isn't on the bus line. Uh, it may look like, oh my gosh, our institutional, our, our movement-wide ethos of like uh, work for pennies. 
you're not going to you're not going to attract people uh, from low income uh, groups who again because of the economics of racism are disproportionately people of color uh, if you're not paying people enough because then it's only the rich people who can 